Are you serious? Are we going live? It's 2 o'clock in the morning in Israel, here in Jerusalem. It's 2 a.m. What? Uh, but it is Sunday Night Live, and it's 7 p.m., I guess, or almost 7 p.m. Uh, in the East Coast in America. I want to say welcome to Sunday Night Live. It is a powerful broadcast. Um... I'm going to keep the lights down low. I don't want to wake up the whole neighborhood here in Jerusalem. Last thing you want to do is wake up the neighborhood in Jerusalem. Um, and also let Sister Heidi rest, please. Uh, but by the way, there's a lot going on. and we, I mean, it's huge what's going on. I don't know which big story do I need to talk about first because there's so much taking place. Uh, but I'm just going to wait just a couple minutes here and let some folks get in here. Um, because I am on just a couple minutes early, and uh, it's just incredible what we've been witnessing all over the world, really. <clears throat> um, what's going on in Hawaii is huge right now. Breaking news in Hawaii, it is huge what's taking place in Hawaii, and uh, what can I say other than it's crazy. Um, I pray for the people of Hawaii. Some of those folks are now being cut off. They're stranded. They've been cut off. There's no water, no power, and the hot lava is flowing, and now they have no escape routes. And there's several people now that have been trapped in this situation, and it's going to get worse throughout the night. As the lava continues to flow, uh, it is, uh, it's just incredible what's taking place in Hawaii. Also, we got big news um, in West Virginia, uh, as we have floodwaters raging now in West Virginia. Eight different counties in the state of West Virginia are in a state of emergency. And matter of fact, I just got a phone call from ABC News in New York called me on the phone uh, because of our YouTube video we did uh, with the dynamic footage about the floodwaters raging in West Virginia. They called and wanted to know if, uh, if they could use the footage for ABC News tonight in New York City. I told them it wasn't my video, but the, uh, and I gave them the name of the, um, the ladies that sent us the video. And so we want to thank Vicki, we want to thank uh, uh, Rihanna and Judy for sending us the footage of the uh, floodwaters raging in West Virginia they sent the footage to us gave us permission we could use it we put it up as a YouTube video and in less than an hour our phone rang and it was ABC News New York City ABC News New York wanting to use it for the uh, for the news to use the footage on the news because it was such great footage and so we put them in contact with uh, Vicky and Rihanna and Judy. Uh, so you may see that floodwater footage actually on the news in New York uh, or nationally even on ABC News. Okay, so that's pretty cool. Anyway, I couldn't believe it. They tracked us down all the way here. I said, look, I'm in Jerusalem. They tracked us down. Okay, now, what's going on is a whole lot of things. It's not just West Virginia, it's not just Hawaii, but right here in Israel, as, of course, uh, there was two days of ceasefire. We were hoping everybody would just calm down after all the rockets. You know, the Hamas fired 185 rockets from the Gaza Strip into Israel. Israel responded, uh, hitting 55 targets in the Gaza Strip. Um, then the Palestinians said, no more, no more. Can we have a ceasefire? Israel said, sure. That lasted two days. And then Hamas fired a rocket. They actually ended up sitting and firing three rockets into Israel last night, early this morning, actually, early Sunday morning. Israel responded by uh, flying, flying into Gaza and blowing up 15 Hamas targets. Um, and unfortunately, I know there was a, a woman that was killed. She was a nurse. So the media is making a big issue out of that. Um, and even 
took it all the way to the United Nations, of which then Nikki Haley had to stand up and veto a resolution that was brought forward by the Kuwaiti government trying to condemn Israel and was calling for international protection of the Gaza Strip. So they were trying to declare war on Israel using the United Nations. Now, today I've seen two United Nations vehicles running. Our car that we were in was pulled over and uh, went through a complete inspection. They had us get out of the car, checked our passports, went through all of our cameras, everything. Um, uh, our cab driver wasn't very happy about it, but he had to comply. But that's standard procedure. It was whereas our car wasn't the only one. They they were pulling over several, and the reason is we were in the West Bank, and uh, and so these things had happened, and so everybody's on heightened alert now. But really, it's very peaceful. It's been very peaceful here in Jerusalem, and basically in Israel. It's really just Gaza where this uprising has been continuing to go on, and there's nothing anybody can do really about that. Um, but to pray, and of course, there's never going to be peace. You know, that's one thing is we got to just say that really, I don't care if they sign a peace agreement or not, a covenant with many, like it says in the Bible, it, it's, we're never going to have peace here until the Prince of Peace comes, until the Messiah, until, uh, uh, Yeshua, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, till he comes, there truly truly will never be peace you know he, jesus even said these words he said you know in the world you'll have trouble but in me you have peace all right so we're going to talk about a lot of things here tonight great to see everyone i want to say hi to natalie barry terry kimberly fly fishing for heaven's sake robo mom's in the house she said the lights are off and pastor paul's home what well really no i'm not <laughs> i'm not home robo mom we're here in jerusalem but Lights are down, um, and I'm staying kind of quiet. Can you guys hear me, though? Can you guys hear me? Um, you just can't stop prophecy. You're right, Christy. You just can't stop prophecy. It doesn't stop. doesn't matter what we want to do. Uh, anyway, <clears throat> RoboMom says, hi, brother. Hey, there's the Southern Boy, Jane, Ashley, Sarah, Barry, uh, Mike's in the house, Purple, uh, yeah, this is the Salvation Station, and uh, we're glad to be with all of you guys tonight. Like I said, it's 2 a.m. here in Jerusalem. Uh, the situation is getting very bad in Hawaii, and it's getting very bad in West Virginia. And don't forget, there's wildfires burning out of control in Colorado and in, uh, I believe it's New Mexico. Uh, somebody help me. It's certainly Colorado, maybe Arizona. Uh, they're burning out of control. So that's another situation that's kind of being overlooked by most people. Okay, let me get right into to the story. Let me tell you what's going on in Hawaii right now. Here's the situation. Um, this just now in, 37 minutes ago, breaking news coming out of Hawaii. Residents are now stranded with no power, no water, in certain areas has been cut off by lava in Hawaii. Nearly a dozen people now are stranded in an area that's now been cut off by the lava flowing vigorously. The eruptions from the volcano in Hawaii, according to authorities, <clears throat> Hawaii's Civil Defense Service officials said they went through the neighborhood to warn the residents this was their last chance to evacuate before their final escape route was cut off by lava. Some of the people chose to stay in their area, which now has no power, no cell reception, no, no water lines. Uh, the landlines are now down, and the water is off. In other words, it's, the lava has destroyed the infrastructure. The authorities are now planning to try to airlift these people out if the lava spreads any further and endangers these a dozen or so people who held out. Some say they were staying because they had nowhere else to go. Three people have been evacuated from an isolated part of Kapoho community today 
and uh, a map has been shared by the US Geological Survey on Twitter shows the lava flow is encroaching on the community of Kapoho and the community of McKenzie State Park both are at risk being cut off as the lava flows toward the ocean and is blocking all potential escape routes <clears throat> the map shows the lava flow at least 87 homes are destroyed the number has also now risen to about 102 homes uh, and the reporting the reporting of a mounting amount of damage follow the mandatory evacuations and uh, it's just an ugly excuse me very ugly scene as the US Geological Survey says that there is no end in sight the mountain continues to shake and quake uh, the mayor has told people look if you stay here on your own we're not going to help you but now I guess that's changed these 12 people that have been cut off by the lava are in extreme danger they have no electricity they have no power they have no cell phone communication uh, and the lot they have no escape routes and the lava is is surrounding them and will eventually overtake them if we don't get them out of there and so they're working on this feverishly right now to try to get over there and to help get those people out of there and again I want to welcome everybody tonight this is Sunday Night Live I am live from New from Jerusalem it is 2 a.m. in the morning so I'm keeping the lights down low keeping my voice down low I don't want to uh, awake the people here staying at the hotel so please uh, uh, bear with me on that can you guys hear me okay though Barry Truman's in the house can you guys hear me there might be a little bit of a delay here so I'll wait just a couple moments and say hi to everybody Lorraine there's uh, Melissa's in the house um, Michelle Davis is here Michelle how you doing uh, Craig Cindy Ashley uh, everybody says yes we can hear you good okay thank you thank you thank you Jerry Hernandez are you serious um, how you doing Pocahontas code searcher are you in the uh, chat room is code searcher in the chat room right now Jack and Mindy are here all right great to see everybody you know code searcher came on the air and was Heidi actually interviewed him um, before we came to Israel while I was in India basically I was in India then and so we really appreciate that interview and we actually when I get back home uh, we're going to bring Code Searcher back on, get, get another update from him live on what's been going on. Of course, he's there on the Big Island as well. Um, it's a lot going on here, folks. Let me tell you what else is happening. My voice sounds a little raspy. It's because I'm keeping it down, just keeping it down, okay? Um, <clears throat> and it is a little raspy. Uh, it's probably from the dust the heat and everything going on here um, oh yes we've been praying for Tommy Robinson I know it's a terrible situation for him there in the UK um, it's just unbelievable alright so anyway guys let me tell you what else is happening with Hawaii uh, it's it's incredible what's happening there but this is just brand new breaking news right now from the situation in Hawaii uh, for those of you just now joining us, here's what we got. Residents have been stranded. There are 12, at least 12 residents stranded with no power, no water, no cell phone communications, completely cut off from all escape routes, and uh, got to figure out a way to go in and get them. Um, they've been stranded. They've been cut off. The lava is flowing vigorously. The eruptions continue in the fissures all over the big island there of Hawaii and Hawaii Civil Defense Service officials said they went through the neighborhood to warn the residents this was their last chance to evacuate before the final escape route was cut off by the lava some of the people chose to stay which now has no power no cell rep reception 
no landlines, no water. And so uh, authorities are planning to try to airlift those people out of the lava, out of the uh, trapped areas, because the, if the lava spreads further and endangers the, the, the lives of the dozen or so people, some say they were staying because they really had nowhere else to go. <coughs> and we know that there's three people were evacuated this afternoon uh, from an isolated part of Kapoho community, which has been cut off, all escape routes cut off, according to Hawaii Fire Department. A map shared by the U.S. Geological Survey on Twitter yesterday uh, showed the lava flow encroaching the community of Kapoho and McKenzie State Park. Both are at risk of being cut off as the lava flows toward the ocean and blocks the potential escape routes. And at least 87 homes have been destroyed. I have another report that says 102 homes have been destroyed. This has been going on now, folks, since May the 3rd. When the, so for one month now, and it, there's no end in sight. Matter of fact, the, uh, according to the U.S. Geological Survey, the earthquakes continue to shake and quake. Uh, the lava continues to flow out of these 20 four different fissures especially fisher number eight and there a coach searcher just said really paul it's 200 homes so and he would know he's there and so the media is behind again and it's reporting and part of it is they're purposely under reporting so as code searcher says um in the chat room there that there's actually about 200 homes that have been destroyed <clears throat> and i would think that he would be correct because if you've been noticing, they were holding that number at 82 uh, forever and would not update it. I think part of the thing is here, what we have is a, a situation where uh, it is a little, maybe it's maybe a little more difficult to get some of the information out of there. But uh, also, I think the news is being suppressed. It's being suppressed, and it doesn't shock me. I mean, this ain't the only story that we see the mainstream, lamestream media suppress the story. I'm going to give you an example, folks. I got a phone call uh, about an hour and a half ago from ABC News in New York. Literally, my phone rang. It said, New York City. I said, who's that? And I answered, it's uh, ABC News New York. They saw the video that we did about the floodwaters raging in West Virginia, which right now, West Virginia in a state of emergency, eight different counties in West Virginia, state of emergency. The floodwaters this evening are going to rise five feet above stage uh, flood level. It's going to be catastrophic what's about to happen in West Virginia. And here's the thing. Nobody even knew it was going on. The media wasn't even covering it. Uh, Vicky and uh, Rihanna Judy contacted us yesterday, told us what was happening uh, in Mooresfield and actually sent us footage of raging floodwaters there. We then uploaded the video this afternoon breaking the news to the world that, hey guys, there's a serious problem going on in West Virginia. Uh, I put the video up within an hour after the video was posted. ABC News New York called me on the phone asking if they could use the footage for, their, for the nightly newscast. We told them it wasn't our footage, that it came from Vicky and Rihanna Judy. And so we gave them their phone numbers so that they could contact them and get permission. So you'll probably see the same footage that I was using first on YouTube here. Uh, will probably show up on ABC News tonight because they asked for permission to use it. We gave them permission, but we also gave them the name of the people who actually did the video. Now, here's the thing. Nobody even knows this is going on in West Virginia. But there's a state of emergency in eight counties. So we've got the we've got apocalyptic, and this is truly apocalyptic situation in Hawaii right now. We're praying for everybody that's still on the big island, especially the people that have been trapped. We have apocalyptic uh raging water uh flooding of a biblical it could literally be, it could become of a biblical scale in West Virginia right now. 
and we have raging forest fires out of control in Colorado and Arizona, parts of New Mexico, and that's just getting started. And so you can know this. Uh, these and, and at the same time, there is uh, fighting going on. We're nearly at the brink of war in the Middle East here between the Palestinians and the Israelis along the Gaza Strip. That's going on here in the Middle East. Uh, also, don't forget Mad Dog. Don't forget the face of war. Jim James Mad Dog Mattis. Uh, he uh, sent a strong word to China. China, of course, built those five man-made islands in the middle of the Pacific Ocean and are now starting to try to claim the waters as theirs and also trying to claim some of the disputed islands that they have with some of the other nations like the nation of Japan, uh, some of the Philippine islands, some of the islands of Vietnam, some of the islands of uh, Indonesia. I mean, it, so Mad Dog is saying, what do you think you're doing? You just don't get to come in here and just take over part of the Pacific Ocean, uh, especially when the United States and China both are very aware that right there in that area is an unbelievable amount of deposit of oil supply, and that's what it's all about. China's going to use their military muscle to not only try to take a few islands away from people, but it's really about getting in position to drill for the, for the oil that's in that uh, international waters. So you got that going on. Now let me just go back to Hawaii for a minute because I think we, we got to be serious. I want to welcome all of you that are with us. There's over 1,113 of you tonight. This is Sunday Night Live. I want to go. Uh, Arizona's got wildfires. Uh, Colorado's got wildfires. New Mexico's got wildfires. West Virginia's got raging floodwaters. And Hawaii is in an apocalypse. I've been saying this. Hawaii is the epicenter of the apocalypse. Look at your map. Look at your ring of fire of all the earthquakes that are going on all around the ring of fire. It's all about the center. Right in the middle of the ring of fire is the United States state of Hawaii. And the big island, the volcano, for 30 days has been shaken and quaking, erupting, releasing poisonous gases, smoke, ash, lava. The magma's moving all over the island. Fissures are opening up everywhere. Now, homes of two, over, Code Searcher says 200 homes have been destroyed. Uh, you have people cut off. Right now, over a dozen people. I guarantee if the media says there's a dozen people, I guarantee there's 50, maybe 100, who are cut off from all water, all electricity, no cell phones, no communications, no internet, no way to communicate with anybody. They are stranded out there, cut off, no escape routes, lava's flowing. And in fissure number eight, folks, the lava is f literally shooting into the air 260 feet into the air, 25 stories high, hot lava over 2,000 degrees. Are you serious? Are you serious? Did you say 2,000 degrees? It's like hell on earth. The paradise has become hell on earth, the big island. And uh, it's the epicenter of the apocalypse. So America... Maybe we should take a look in the mirror. Hawaii flowing with hot lava like a river of hell itself. West Virginia, floodwaters like the days of Noah. And Arizona, Colorado, New Mexico, raging forest fires now consuming and getting out of control. That's just a little bit of what's taking place. Don't forget Yellowstone National Park. It continues to shake and there's quakes going on up there as the sleeping giant is trying to wake up. And uh, Mary Greeley, who's doing a great job uh, tracking the earthquakes connection between Hawaii and Yellowstone. The magma is moving. Code Searcher is doing a great job there in uh, Hawaii, keeping everybody, keeping all of us up to speed. And we're praying for him and uh, his family and for everyone else that's in the Big Island. Heidi's got an uncle that lives in Hawaii. Okay, so we want you to pray for him. 
And there's just so much to talk about here. But let me tell you what else is happening. Uh, besides all of these things, let me go to the earthquake map. Just kind of help you understand what's happening in Hawaii. That uh, it's not over, okay? It is not over by a long shot. Matter of fact, here's the story. There's been 149 earthquakes in the last 24 hours. Did you hear what I just said? It's not dying down, people. It's intensifying. And the majority of these earthquakes are Hawaii, the island volcano, the epicenter of the apocalypse. And uh, I'm just going to share this with you. 149 earthquakes in the last 24 hours. Over 100 of those earthquakes. Did you hear what I'm going to tell you? Over 100 of those earthquakes are Hawaii. That These earthquakes are 2.5 or higher. Okay, so there's been way more than 100 earthquakes in Hawaii in the last 24 hours. But I'm saying just, we won't even count them unless they hit 2.5. I'm not going to name all 125 earthquakes, excuse me, 149 earthquakes. Okay, just let me give you the big ones. 5.6 Tonga, 5.1 Central Mid-Atlantic Ridge, uh, 4.6 Mayotte. 4.6 Indonesia, 4.3 Peru, 4.4 Chile, a 5.0 in Mayotte, a 4.8 in the Philippines, a 4.4 in south of Australia, also a 4.5 earthquake hit Chile. Um, there was a 4.7 very strong in Gonzales, Gonzalo, Dominican Republic, uh, 4.6 Tonga, 4.3 Chile. Uh, 4.5 the Philippines, 4.7 Guam, and really, folks, 4.4 4. 4 Fiji, but really, it's all about Hawaii. Again, 149 earthquakes in the last 24 hours, over 100 of them, Hawaii. Now, Hawaii's not the only place that there's earthquakes, but... I mean, really, let's be honest. It's all about Hawaii and the lava and the magma and the quaking and the shaking and the earth breaking and the fissures opening up and the homes being burnt to the ground and no water, no electricity, no power, no cell phone communications. At least a dozen people have been cut off, and I, I would say that number's a lot more than that. It's an emergency situation. It's developing in Hawaii. It's been developing, but now it's even getting bigger. And oh, by the way, let me just say this for you. And I want to welcome all of you that are with us. Thank you for being with us tonight, Sunday Night Live. It's uh, uh, at 2 It's two twenty a.m. here in Jerusalem. Uh, I'm not going to, uh, you know, it's hard for me to say this. It's tough to at this time of night to be broadcasting but so I'm keeping my voice down and uh, keeping the lights down low but I want to welcome all 1261 of you that are with us and uh, it's getting crazy out there in Hawaii it's getting crazy but let me tell you what else is happening in Hawaii another report I think it's very important and that is there's new cracks have opened up up on the crater of the Volcano, and this is very, very, very disturbing. Uh, they sent a drone up there above the crater. Uh, it was sent to investigate Hawaii's erupting volcano. It has left scientists baffled after the aerial footage showed there's no more lava lake. Where did it go? We'll talk about that in just a second. The volcano's summit, the crater up there, has no more lava lake. It's been covered over with uh, with a tons of ash and and debris and boulders falling down in it and there's huge cracks new cracks have been opening up all over at the top there near the crater uh, and there's no lava lake well if there's no lava lake then that means the pressure from the volcano is not coming up through the crater it has stopped it's 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 expanding into the fissures here's the problem that's not going to be enough release of pressure to satisfy 
the situation. Now, some would say, no, Paul, this sounds like a good thing, that if there's no lava lake, maybe this thing is dying down and uh, it's about over. But there's reports saying they're very concerned that the disappearance of the lava lake could mean that the mountains building massive pressure and then could blow beyond our comprehension. It could blow on a biblical scale. We're talking about an apocalyptic, catastrophic, cataclysmic event that could be about to happen at the epicenter of the apocalypse. And when I see over 100 earthquakes there in the last 24 hours, are you serious? Also, the drone footage showed yellow sulfur, dangerous yellow sulfur being released. Also, high levels of, of uh, sulfur dioxide is being released from some of the fissures. And we know that some of the lava is flowing into the ocean in at least three different locations. And soon it will be four over by Copo, by uh, Cohopo, uh, uh, community there that's going to reach the ocean and make the fourth river to reach the ocean this also is creating massive concern for the island so I'm not over exaggerating here I'm being brutal if anything I'm probably under reporting the seriousness of the situation it is the epicenter of the apocalypse there's over a hundred earthquakes of 2.5 or higher at the volcano lava is flowing everywhere it's the hottest lava ever recorded over 2,000 degrees fissure number eight is shooting lava 260 feet into the air are you clueless on this do you understand 25 stories stand stand somewhere look up at a building go up 25 floors and say uh, then imagine lava that high coming from the earth and oh by the way there's 24 fissures uh, uh there's there's a river of flowing lava the magma's moving underneath the mountain like crazy where's it gonna blow where is it gonna blow what's gonna happen next is really the concern uh and you have at least a dozen people i would say it's more like 50 i don't know but when the news media is reporting 87 homes have been burnt to the ground and yet Code Searcher says, no, it's like 200 have been burnt to the ground. They're under-reporting this story. This is a major story. I'm going to tell you why they're under-reporting it. Because they don't want people to not come to Hawaii. They want the tourism to continue to flow on the other islands. And they don't want to set the alarm very loud. They're hoping this thing will die down. But there's too much data pointing to the fact that we might be about ready to see a catastrophic, cataclysmic, apocalyptic event where a mountain blows up. And guess, guess what? You're talking about landslides. Now, Mary Greeley has been talking about if it happens, you could see a massive landslide. It will happen that the land would then come rushing into the ocean at 200 miles an hour. When the, when the land flows into the ocean at 200 miles an hour, it will set off a tsunami of about a thousand feet high racing toward the west coast that is not that is absolutely what would happen so if that mountain blows the landslide will happen the tsunami will follow so it's not only about we're not just talking about hawaii here so when i keep telling you and this is what the lord revealed to me was i said paul you need to pray hard this is the epicenter of an apocalypse it is the center of the ring of fire and it is in serious situation. Have the prayer warriors pray for the people, not only of the big island, but to pray for the whole situation here, even as it affects the West Coast. Now, let me give you some more information here. It's very important. Um, um, and that is this. Um, let's go to West Virginia, because also West Virginia is a, a, a state of flood emergency. Uh, information, West Virginia Governor Jim Justice has just declared a state of emergency in eight counties because of the flooding from the heavy rains. The governor's office says in a news release that some emergency evacuations are already underway today, uh, Sunday, in the states following severe storms. He said the declarations for Berkeley, for Grant, 
for Hampshire, for Hardy, for Jefferson, for Mineral, for Morgan, and Pendleton counties. It allows the use of state assets and directs the West Virginia State Police and Army National Guard to get in there and help in the areas that are most hard hit. The National Weather Service says there is a moderate flooding forecast along the south branch of the Potomac River, which is expected to crest nearly five feet above flood stage tonight, Sunday night, June 3rd, in West Virginia. Um, you can go and look at the video that I've, I posted a couple hours ago on my, on my YouTube channel. Uh, it's video footage of actual footage in West Virginia. It was sent to me by Vicki and Rihanna and Judy. They sent me the actual footage. They, give, they gave me permission to use it for YouTube. I put it on YouTube. Within an hour after I posted the uh, video, it had uh, a couple, two, two or three thousand views at that point. I got a phone call from um, ABC News New York, called me all the way here in Jerusalem and asking if they could use the footage for the ABC News in New York. I told them, of course they could use it. I don't care, but it's not my footage. I actually got, the, I got permission to use the footage and I told them that, I said, go ahead and use it, but let me tell you the name of the people who actually filmed it, and you can call them. And I gave them Vicky and Rihanna and Judy's phone number so that they could get a hold of them and get permission. They will be using it on ABC News tonight. Now, while that's going on, all these things are happening. I want to welcome everybody with us. There's over 1,600 people tonight with us live on uh, Sunday Night Live. Uh, we have the epicenter of the apocalypse, Hawaii, tonight. As, I'm serious. Now, breaking news just about 20 minutes ago that uh, residents in Hawaii have now been cut off. The, uh, there's no more escape routes. for, According to CNN News, they're saying at least a dozen people, but I would think it's probably more like 50. Uh, the situation is this. The people are stranded. There is no more escape routes for them uh, and uh, in a remote area there uh, they also have no water no electricity no cell phone or uh, landline communication they're completely cut off from the world they're sitting there tonight lava is building all around them and uh, you got to fly in over the helicopter and get them out of there or um, they're on their own at this point so a lot of prayers for these folks in Hawaii, and it's in and the and with the, the mountain now shaking. Because you know, yesterday I checked this thing, there had been about 73 earthquakes in a 24 hour period. I said to myself, Could it be we're starting to see it slow down? But the lava was flying everywhere, and so I'm thinking it does. And the, you know, maybe the earthquakes are starting to slowly subside. Maybe, maybe we're finally going to see it ease up. No, folks, this afternoon it is in accelerated with over 100 earthquakes and uh, that are 2.5 or higher. The lava's flowing faster now than ever, hotter than ever in history, cutting off escape routes, no food, no water, no communications, no power for uh, at least a dozen residents, and it could be as many as 50 over there. Over 200 homes have been destroyed, according to Code Searcher, and it's just getting uglier by the minute in the epicenter of the apocalypse and when so when I uh, talk about the coming apocalypse this is nothing this is this is nothing if this mountain oh by the way reports just coming out the mountain crater there's no longer a lava lake you have to hear what I'm telling you that means that the lava is not coming up through the crater anymore but it's but it's branching out through the fissures and if it, the mountain keeps shaking is it getting ready to blow apart? Is it getting ready to blow the whole mountain apart? Now, if it is, there will be a massive landslide, according to Mary Greeley, and according to the U.S. Geological Survey. I even just read a report from the U.S. Geological Survey team members that were there who are saying fear of a massive landslide, which would create a huge tsunami. That tsunami would certainly then head toward the West Coast somewhere. Uh, this is where we're at, folks. Will it happen? I don't know, but uh, 
it certainly is something to be concerned about and to be praying about. And we're asking all of you to pray and uh, to understand. And it's not just Hawaii tonight, but it's West Virginia. As massive floodwaters are starting to rage as the rain came roaring down, the flash flooding now. West Virginia is notorious for this because of its steep mountains in the Appalachia. And it can get ugly fast. And uh, uh, I want to really thank Vicki and, and Rihanna and Judy for getting me this footage of West Virginia flooding so that I could put it on the YouTube channel which really has woke up the world to be quite honest with you because uh, less than an hour after we put our YouTube channel our YouTube video up about the floodwaters in West Virginia ABC News uh, in New York called me on my cell phone tracking me down in, Vir in Jerusalem to ask for permission to use the footage to put on ABC News tonight we, we I immediately said sure use all you want you also need to know who the people who are actually who filmed it get their permission as well and I gave them the number so they could track them down so this is where we're at it's getting uh, precarious and don't forget the wildfires burning out of control in the west coast we're talking Colorado Arizona New Mexico who knows where it will spread from there meanwhile there is reports out of North Carolina there was a landslide there two days ago it did kill two people, and we're keeping a close eye on that. That was an unexpected landslide. It did take the life of two people. And, oh, by the way, India, the um, Nepal virus has now claimed the lives of 13 people in India. Now, I was in India um, when this virus broke out. Uh, it killed 10 people while I was there. Also, while I was in India, of course, you had the... You had the uh, dust storms that swept through the country of India. I even got sand in my eyes in Bhubaneswar when a storm hit there and killed three people. But this, these dust storms spread across India. They would be dust rolling, followed by lightning strikes and hail, then, and then the high winds and rain. And 109 people died of lightning strikes while I was in India. Uh, three of them in the town I was in, in the lightning storms that we were in. So, and also massive heat waves. And, uh, and yes, then this virus broke out in southern India. This is a deadly virus. And now the World Health Organization extremely concerned. It has claimed the life of 13 people. They're trying to figure out a way how to contain this. They don't want this virus, the Nepal virus to get loose. Uh, you can spell that virus is spelled N-I-P-A-H. That's N-I-P-A-H, the Nepal virus. It's in India. So pray for the people there. It's another plague. It's another plague that, of course, the Bible said would come up on the earth. And uh, we're watching it. Now, meanwhile, what's going on in the sun? I hate to bring it up, but I'm going to have to. The sun is roaring. The solar winds are off the charts. They were over almost 800 kilometers per second. They then slowed down to 691, but that's not slow. That's still huge. And that was about two hours ago. I'm going to check it right now just to give you an update where it's at. It's at 629. Thank God. Maybe it's coming down. But still, that's still twice as fast as what's normal those solar winds are blowing directly through a hole in the sun's atmosphere which are then facing the earth that is creating an unbelievable pressure on the earth which doesn't help this hawaii situation with earthquakes uh or anywhere for that matter when the sun is releasing that kind of pressure and it's not just the solar winds and the solar pressure of the CMEs coming off of the sun that's affecting the earth and our mag but our magnetic field, our, our shield is affected. Maybe CERN is even causing part of that. Oh, by the way, 55 fireballs have broke through the earth's atmosphere in the last 24 hours reported around the globe. 55 fireballs have broke through the earth's atmosphere. It's like, it's like every apocalyptic thing I can 
could report on is happening somewhere on the globe right now and intensifying at a on a biblical scale. And, uh, I mean, it's just, uh, what, what are you going to do? What are you going to say? It's just happening. Guys, even in the streets of Jerusalem today, you didn't get to see the fight. Uh, I'm sitting in a cab. Sister Heidi and I are sitting in the uh, cab with uh, our cab driver. And we had been, we had traveled all the way to Tiberias. And uh, uh, we had went to Jericho. Uh, um, and we had returned back to Jerusalem. And uh, as we're coming through the streets of Jerusalem, two cab drivers got out of their cabs in front of us. And all of a sudden, a fisticuffed, I'm talking about a major fight, broke out right in the street. The older gentleman slugged the younger guy first. Uh, the younger guy then uh, punched back and then kicked him in the side and then and then did some kind of wrestle move and took him down and began to pound on him. It was at that point that our our cab driver uh, jumped out of jumped out of the cab and broke up the fight, got him back up off the ground. I I got my camera turned on by then, and uh, and then they they finally he broke him up. He chewed him out. They each got in their cabs to leave. The one guy spit uh, at the older guy, the younger guy did. And then our cab driver, who, his name is uh, Rami. And I use Rami all the time. Every time I come to Jerusalem, I use him all the time. Rami then uh, starts chewing the young guy out for for fighting with the old guy. Well, when they finally, when Rami got back in the taxi, I said, Rami, what's going on out there? I mean, it's crazy. He said, I said, what were they fighting about? He said, 50 shekels. They were fighting over 50 shekels. And uh, it's crazy. And he said, it's a good thing I got here. It would, it would have got a lot worse. Believe me, he said. It would have been a lot worse. And uh, I'm thinking, man, tensions are running high that people would be, cab drivers get out and just start slugging it out right here in the streets of Jerusalem over 50 shekels. But tensions are high here in Jerusalem. Uh, again, the ceasefire had come. Both sides had agreed. Remember, it was Hamas that fired the 130 rockets at Israel first. Just got to be honest, the day I arrived here, uh, Israel responded with airstrikes hitting 55 targets in Gaza. Hamas said, okay, no more, no more. Let's have a peace. Let, let's have a ceasefire. Let's calm down. That lasted two days. And then uh, early this morning, uh, they fired three rockets into Israel, Israel responded by striking airstrikes, hitting 15 more targets of Hamas. A nurse was killed by accident in Gaza. So what happened? The Kuwaiti government uh, brought a resolution to condemn Israel today and to, and to ask the world, an international force, to come in and to protect, they said, the Palestinian people. The United States vetoed that resolution and said, no, 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 no. The world's not going to go into Israel and try to make and, and try to be the police here of this situation. This is between the Israeli government and the Palestinian people. Um, so anyway, with that said, tensions again. Now, if you're here and if you come to Israel, you don't have, anything, you don't have nothing to worry about because Jerusalem and the whole area is very, very safe, very, very calm among the tourism that goes on here. There's no dangers. The fighting is always about Gaza, way down there in the Gaza Strip. But we sure don't want to see that. You're right. Why would these two cab drivers fisticuffs slug it out over 50 shekels, which is about 12 U.S. dollars? Tensions are high. And, of course, you know, this is the month of Ramadan. It's um, that we're in the middle of the 30 days of Ramadan. I think this was day 18. Um, so you know, tensions are high here um, for the between each other. I'm talking about these are Muslim. These are two Muslim cab drivers fighting with each other. It wasn't a Jew and a Muslim. It was a, two Muslims slugging it out and uh, over 50 shekels. Just look, it's the Middle East. Okay, then and, and these things can happen easy. Oh, by the way, I want to say uh, there's been some of you may know have heard of Dr. Stephen Pitts. 
he was shot and killed. He was 59 years old, and uh, he was involved. He was one of the forensic um, psychiatrists for the John Benet Ramsey trial. He was also a very uh, well known, uh, involved in a in uh, Phoenix, Arizona. He helped uh, in the investigation of a serial killer who killed nine people in Phoenix. He has been found dead. He has been shot and killed along with two other women. Uh, some type of an investigation he was doing and somebody shot him in the head. He is dead. St Dr. Stephen Pitt, age 59, out of the Phoenix, Arizona uh, area. Something don't sound right here. Who wanted Dr. Stephen Pitts dead? And uh, so this is the kind of stuff that's going on, folks. This is the kind of stuff that's going on. And so there's a lot of folks in the Robo Moms, right? It's time for revival in, in uh, Hawaii. It's time for revival. You know, we are on the air uh, every Sunday night. My uh, television show, The Coming Apocalypse, airs every Sunday night in Honolulu, Hawaii. We're on that channel. Plus, we're on Direct TV every Sunday night across the country, anyway. But we're on in third. We're on, we're on Direct TV every Sunday night all across America. If you didn't know that, it's channel three sixty seven. It airs every Sunday night at ten p.m. Eastern on Direct TV. But we're also on thirteen other cities across America, and one of those cities we're on is Honolulu, Hawaii. Every Sunday night at 9 p.m. Honolulu time. Don't ask me what time that is, but it's at 9 p.m. Honolulu time. So, Robo Moms brought up a great point. We're praying for revival across the world, across America. We better start praying really heavy for people to turn their life to Jesus Christ tonight in Hawaii. Starting in Hawaii. I think... Uh, I appreciate you putting it up there, Robo Mom, because it is time to pray for revival. Um, it is time to pray for the people of Hawaii. Uh, they truly need our prayers. We need to intercede. There are good Christians there, and we we do hear from. We do have members of our online church in Hawaii, and uh, Heidi's uncle lives in Hawaii. Uh, Code Searcher is in Hawaii. A lot of people. Are, we've got. Uh, and there's a lot of good Christians in Hawaii. Oh, J.D. Farg is in Hawaii. Okay. we got a lot of great Christians over there. But we also know there's a lot of people in Hawaii who are not saved. A lot of people need Jesus Christ, need to be born again, need to be set free from the bondage of sin. And uh, we're praying for them tonight. We really are praying for them tonight. This is Sunday Night Live. Let me just say quickly here as we lift uh, our Sunday night offering as we always do if you have a special prayer request you'd like to put in that just go ahead and do that and and maybe there's somebody you know in Hawaii that needs prayer maybe you want to even say pastor I'm putting in my prayer request I'm praying for the for the people of revival in Hawaii I'm praying for the safety of the people who are trapped in Hawaii uh, also put down pray for the peace of Jerusalem while you're at because the peace of the Middle East, pray for that. But certainly, let's lift up our brothers and sisters in prayer. Robo Mama just put the uh, donation link there for you, make it easy for you. Thank you, Melissa. Thank you, Robo Mom. Um, I'm not going to stay on late tonight. Look, it's three. It's two forty-five a.m. here, and uh, I've got. i tomorrow. I'm going to be uh, on the Mount of Olives. I'm doing. Uh, I'm going to be doing some filming for television on the Mount of Olives tomorrow. I'm also then going to go get this. I'm going to go to the Valley of Rephaim. I'm going to the street right in Jerusalem where the Valley of the Giants um, and do some filming there for television. I'm also going to go to what's called the Mount of Evil Council. The Mount of Evil Council. I'm going to where the United Nations is here in Israel. I'm going to film there. Also, the Mount of Corruption, okay? I'm going to film there. And I'm going to go to the U.S. Embassy 
and uh, and get some footage for you from there. So that's uh, that's the four different locations that we plan on filming and and getting some footage for you for both YouTube and for television. Now now I've got some footage that you guys haven't seen yet that's going to be used for a television special because I actually went into some tombs um, that nobody goes to. Nobody goes there. Okay? Zero. I mean, nobody. Um, but uh, our contact here in Jerusalem told us about these tombs, took us to where they were at, and uh, we went in exploring into the tombs. Now, the tomb I went into had seven graves in it, or seven different places bodies could be laid. It is a phenomenal, it's a, it's a tomb that's over 3,000 years old, and nobody has ever filmed in it. Nobody's ever, there probably hasn't been over 10 people ever walked in it. It's uh, way off the beaten path, but uh, we found it. He knew about it. And we also found some bones uh, in another grave, another cave tomb, and Heidi got pictures of the, pictures of that. So we're going to be pulling that. Now that's, where it was located is very very important place in the Bible so uh, I'll be bringing that to you in a special television show the footage I have the footage and I'll be sharing it with you on a television show but now tomorrow I'm actually going to the valley uh, to a street here in Jerusalem uh, that uh, Rafahim Street uh, Imek Rafahim. It is uh, uh, it is where the, the giants, it's known as the Valley of the Giants, uh, even known as uh, the Valley of the Slaughter by Jeremiah in the Bible. So I'm going to go there. It's, it's actually a street now. There's uh, cafes and restaurants and everything right along this street. It's the name of the street is Amik, uh, Amek Rafahim. Okay, so I'll be on the Mount of Olives. We'll be in different places tomorrow. So pray for us as we get some more good, really good footage and good teaching, some good biblical teaching from these locations. I'll be preaching and teaching for YouTube and television. Tonight, as we lift the offering tonight, uh, as you give tonight, thank you for being faithful. Uh, let's get as many people saved as we can. The other night there were uh, 14 salvations, and we're praying for, for Hawaii. As we're giving tonight, you can give by going to my website at paulbegleyprophecy.com. Please go to my website and give whatever the Lord lays on your heart as you lift your Sunday night live offering. Our online church does this every Sunday night. Make a major difference as we continue to push forward with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Let's bring the world. Let's open the eyes of the blind. Let's, get, let's set the captives free. Let's get people saved and filled with the love of God. Let's pray for revival in Hawaii. I love that suggestion by Robomom. Let's pray for revival. Miss ZD agrees. Let's pray for revival. God bless you, Latanta, Lata all of you, Latanya and, and Victoria and Deb and Access Through Christ and George and Jane. And let's do this tonight. Let's do this tonight in the name of Jesus. While you're giving tonight, can I go back to Hawaii and give you an update again on the situation developing in Hawaii it is getting very serious there's been over 100 earthquakes on the mountain in the last 24 hours there's been 149 earthquakes around the globe that are 2.5 or higher that's a huge number but over 100 of them in Hawaii 2.5 or higher also residents are now stranded there are at least a dozen residents, according to CNN. I think it's more like 50. It's in the area there that's been completely cut off. There's all escape routes have been cut off by hot flowing rivers of lava. Uh, the residents now have no power. They have no water. They have no uh, cell phone towers or no landlines functioning. They are completely cut off from the world and they're being inundated they're being surrounded by the hot flowing lava that's traveling 
over 100 yards per hour. According to CNN, nearly at least a dozen of these people are stranded in an area cut off by the lava flowing vigorous eruptions. Uh, Hawaii Civil Defense Service said they went through the neighborhood to warn the residents this was their last chance to evacuate before the final escape route was cut off by lava. Some chose to stay in the area, which now has no power, no receptions, no landlines, no water, no way for county officials to get to the people, no escape routes. They'll have to be rescued by helicopter. Authorities are planning to try to airlift some of the people out of the lava uh, endangered zones. But some of these people may be lost. Uh, <clears throat> it's, it's getting intense. The river of lava over near Pohoko uh, community is headed to the ocean. There will be a fourth. This, this will make a fourth location. It's going to. The ocean is going to. It's going. The lava is going to reach the ocean. Their escape routes are now completely cut off. And the lava is fissure number eight. The lava is flying, shooting in the air, two hundred and sixty feet into the air. The lava is liquid hot. It's over 2,000 degrees. There is no end in sight to this situation in Hawaii. And meanwhile, while Hawaii is having this unbelievable situation develop, we have a terrible situation in West Virginia as the floodwaters are raging. State of emergency has been declared. Eight different counties uh, we need to pray people's homes are going to be devastated. Folks' uh, lives are in danger. And uh, the threat of landslides, not only uh, in North Carolina, where two people were killed, but West Virginia as well, and Hawaii, as the, as the uh, lava continues to flow, as the uh, earthquakes continue to shake the mountain there, uh, there is the high concern now that a massive eruption on that volcano could set off a major landslide that would hit the ocean. Uh, the, the land would, according to Mary Greeley, the land would, would come sliding down the mountain about 200 miles an hour. It would hit the ocean and send, send a tsunami into the air of over 1,000 feet high headed toward the west coast. Now, it wouldn't remain a 1,000 feet high, but it would be about 300 feet high by the time it got to the west coast somewhere along that west coast. And this is a real possibility. I heard Mary Greeley say that when she was on my show before I came to Israel, and she reported that. But now I read in an article this morning that they are now, the U.S. Uh, US Geological Survey team of experts on site in Hawaii are now talking about the potential landslide into the Pacific Ocean as a real possibility creating a massive tsunami. So you have a serious series of situations. Don't forget the raging forest fires burning out of control in Colorado, Arizona, and in New Mexico. America, are we under siege? Are, uh, and do we need revival? Well, we certainly need revival. And I, let's pray for revival in Hawaii. Let's pray for revival in, Her in Hawaii. I'm getting ready to sign off here, but there are people that need Jesus Christ. And, and tonight, if you're here, and if you would like to be saved, I would want to. I want to pray with you. I'm not going to play a song because of keeping everything low here as far as sound. But I, I want you to know, if you would like to give your life to Jesus Christ, why don't you do this? Type, I want to be saved. Thank you, Robo Mom. I do need my rest. I'm a little, I'm <clears throat> it's almost 3 o'clock in the morning here in Jerusalem. And I have to be ready by 9 o'clock to catch my ride. I want to know, if you want to be saved, would you type, I want to be saved? I want to be saved. Matter of fact, they're going to, somebody, uh, somebody needs to be, 
Odin Star wants to be saved. I'm staying right here at YouTube um, moderators, so if you see their names, just put their name down for me. Odin Star wants to be saved. I'll be looking for just the moderators um, to put that in there. God bless you. We want to pray with you for salvation, Owen, Odin Star. I know there's others out there. You might say, Pastor Begley, are you saying that time's running out? Um, anonymous Mom says, I want to be saved again. I've gotten lukewarm. God bless you, Anonymous Mom. We'll pray for you. You're, you're rededicating. That's God bless you. You want to be saved. Sometimes people are saying, look, I, I'm not right with God, Pastor. I need to repent. I need to get saved. Research Institute says, I want to be saved. Um, God bless you. Uh, praise the Lord for you. Research Institute wants to be saved. And, uh, and uh, the Guatemala volcano of fire has just erupted. Dozens of people are injured and missing. So is this a, tr is this a real report? Jersey wants to be saved. Jersey wants to be saved. God bless you, Jersey. Susan, is that her name? Jersey Susan, thank you. Thank you, Michelle. Wants to be saved. American Patriot wants to be saved. American Patriot wants to be saved. God bless you, American Patriot. A heavier best wants to be saved. Heavier best wants to be saved. God bless you in Jesus' name. Grant wants to be saved. God bless you, Grant, in Jesus' name. We're going to pray with all these folks to be saved tonight. Revival needs to start right here. I think we need to get people saved. Guatemala, Guatemala volcano has just erupted. Several people are dead. Thank you, James. Peter wants to be saved. God bless you, Peter. He wants to be saved. Praise God. Jada wants to be saved. Jada wants to be saved. God bless you. Um, Black Ops wants to be saved. Black Ops wants to be saved. Praise God. Amen. Amen for that. Amen. Sheila or RJ. RJ wants to be saved. Um, I, I couldn't get all those names. Somebody help me on that one. Praise the Lord. It was RJ and it was some, several other. Sherry, okay. Sherry wants to be saved. Praise God. Jimmy wants to be saved. All right, Jimmy. Praise God. Paula wants to be saved. Praise the Lord for you, Paula. Ralph wants to be saved. God bless you, Ralph, in Jesus' name. I'm going to pray with every one of these people. Chad wants to be saved. And we understand we have breaking news. I'm going to check on that news in just a moment. Guys, I'll give you an update on that on Guatemala. Uh, Robert Klinger wants to be saved. God bless you, Robert. We're going to pray for you for salvation also. CBV is rededicating. Also, Carol wants to be saved. Praise God for Carol. Golden Girl, her name is Rachel, wants to be saved. Rachel wants to be saved. Lewis wants to be saved. Lewis wants to be saved. Praise the Lord. Amazing. It's just amazing. People are coming to Jesus Christ tonight. Kevin Jones. Okay, thank you, Robo Mom. Yes, I'm in Israel. It's very late here. It's 3 a.m., right on the dot. 3 a.m. Timothy Van Camp wants to be saved. Timothy Van Camp wants to be saved. Praise the Lord for that in Jesus' name. According to reports, the official death toll is at six people dead, 20 injured as a volcano has erupted in Guatemala just now happening. Um, and we got a lot of folks wanting to be saved here. So let's we're going to pray right now. Uh, Olden Star, uh, Anonymous, uh, research researcher uh, Jersey Susan American Patriot um, heaven best or heavier best excuse me Grant Sheila 
Sheila wants to be saved. Uh, Peter wants to be saved. Jada, Black Ops, RJ, Sherry, Jimmy, Paula, Ralph, Chad, Robert Klinger, Carol, Rachel, Lewis, Timothy, Van Camp, and Sheila uh, all want to be saved. Also, Gia, G-I-A, wants to be saved. Praise the Lord. James wants to be saved. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Folks, it's an apocalyptic situation that I'm not in control of. I've had people say, Begley, you just keep talking about the apocalypse. All right, forget that. We have raging floodwaters in West Virginia, forest fires out of control in Colorado, New Mexico, and Arizona. Hawaii, the epicenter of the apocalypse with the volcano, the flowing lava, the people being cut off, all the situation there. Two people dead from landslides in North Carolina. Guatemala volcano has just erupted. Six dead, 20 injured. I'm not in charge of any of that. I'm not doing any of that. Okay, I'm just reporting to you what's happening, and then I'm asking you, oh, by the way, and they're fighting over in the Middle East, and then we got Mad Dog Mattis threatening China, and you got Kim Jong-un, and you got what Assad wanting to go see Kim Jong-un. Are you crazy, Assad? Are you insane? Um, can we pray with the people who need to be saved right now? Let's pray with these folks. Father, in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord. Rachel wants to be saved. We thank you, God, for setting the captives free. Lord, I want to repent of my sins. I'm confessing my sins to God, and I'm repenting of my sins, and I'm asking Jesus Christ to save me, to set me free, to wash me in the precious blood, and to, and to deliver me from the chains of darkness. I'm calling upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I'm asking Jesus Christ to come into my life to forgive me of my sins. I know I'm a sinner, and I repent of my sins. I confess my sins to God. Player wants to be saved. And so I'm asking Jesus Christ to set me free. FJP wants to be saved. So right here, right now, tonight, by faith in God's grace, in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost, I'm calling upon the name of Jesus because I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe, and I receive Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I believe that Jesus died on the cross for my sins. I believe that Yeshua rose from the dead. I believe that Christ ascended into heaven. And I believe that he's coming back again soon and very soon. And I want to be ready. So right here, right now, by faith in God's grace, in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost, in Jesus' name, I am saved, I am saved, I am saved, I am healed, and I'm delivered and I'm set free, and I'm born again, I am saved in Jesus, saved in Jesus, saved in Jesus, precious name. Somebody give the Lord some praise right now. Odin Star, anonymous researcher, Jersey Susan, American patriot, heaven her best, uh, Grant, Peter, Joppa, Black Ops, RJ, Sherry, Jimmy, Paula, Ralph, Chad, Robert Klinger, Carol, Rachel, Lewis, Timothy Van Camp, Sheila, Gia, James, Player, and FJP. All the, the, these all getting saved here tonight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I have 26 names. I'm sure there could have been, or there probably is more people, and certainly the thousands of people that are going to watch the archive of this broadcast in the next 24 hours. Some of you that are watching are giving your lives to Jesus Christ. And I want to say welcome to the family. 
Welcome to the family of God. God bless every one of you. Toronto, Canada is watching. I'm going to be in Toronto, Canada late June. I think it's June 29th through July 1st. I'm going to be there for three days. I'll be preaching Friday night, Saturday night, Sunday morning, Sunday night in Toronto, Canada. I hope to see you there. Check my website, hit the events, and go down my schedule. You'll see where I'm going to be in Toronto preaching in Canada. <clears throat> I haven't been there in three years, so I really look forward to going back and preaching in Canada. Uh, folks, God bless everybody. We love everybody tonight. Thank you for your love gifts tonight. I want to encourage the people who got saved to be baptized, all 26 of you. And uh, please find a pastor, find a church somewhere in the community where you live. Tell me you give your life to Jesus Christ. Maybe it's a, a Messianic congregation. I'd love to baptize you if you want, want me to. Summer fire is coming up at the end of July. Uh, I'll be at in my home church in Knox, Indiana in what we call Summer Fire. Kevin Wilson's going to be there the Ke and the Kevin Wilson band singing. Our praise and worship team will be there. I'll be preaching that weekend, Friday night, uh, Saturday night, Sunday morning. There will be free breakfast for everyone that comes in from out of town on sa Saturday morning. We will have pizza and all kinds of uh, dinner <clears throat> Saturday evening at the church. Sunday afternoon, uh, we Big, huge Sunday afternoon dinner always. It's it, it festivities for the kids, bouncy houses, slides, all kinds of cool things in the yard that goes on for the kids. I always They always talk me into going down the bouncy slide every year. Uh, so, yeah, we, we just, it's just going to be a great time. I would love to see you. I didn't say mes Masonic. I said m Messianic. Not ma I didn't say Masons. I, you probably misheard me there. No, I'm not telling anybody to go to... To a Mason, I'm saying going to a Messianic congregation. That means Messianic Jews, uh, Jews that are that believe in Yeshua. If you want to go to a Messianic congregation or a uh, a church of your choice of uh, that preaches Jesus Christ as the Savior, wherever you can go, a uh, you feel comfortable and you want to go and be baptized. That's I want to encourage you. I'm just encouraging you to do that. You, you can follow me every day. I can be your online pastor if you don't have a church to go to. But certainly I just want to encourage you to get baptized somehow, somewhere. And then follow us every day. Okay, follow our ministry every day. And, uh, you know, I mean, I'm preaching to people every, every day, basically. And people follow us from all over the world. And we'll love you. And if you're and if you need a blanket, if you're sick, we'll send it to the people that are very ill. Prayer cloths to those that are very sick. We'll send Bibles to people. Anybody that needs a Bible. Um, chemo caps for anyone that is going through chemotherapy. We'd like to have a chemo cap to wear. We anoint them with oil. They're free. The the prayer cloths are free. The Bibles are free. The blankets go out to the very sick are free. To, the, the chemo caps for those going through chemotherapy, they're free. We pray over them. We anoint them with oil. And we pay the postage and send it to you no matter where you are in the world. And we couldn't do it if it weren't for the faithful partners of this ministry. We couldn't do what we do. And that is bring the gospel. Uh, one person asked me, said, Pastor Begley, how in the world do you have over 12,000 videos? Uh, how in the world do you, I said all of those are free all of those are free and we've never received one dime uh, not one dime ad money from YouTube not one dime not one penny has never I've been accused of all kinds of things but there's one thing I can tell you all of my YouTube videos are free they're all free and never we have never been given one penny of compensation from YouTube all of our support is from this amazing online church and the followers of Paul Bigley Prophecy Ministries. It's 100% supported by the followers and our partners of Paul Bigley Prophecy Ministries. And that in itself is an amazing situation. This shows you that God's hand is upon the ministry to lead as many people to Christ. And you, my followers, you, my brothers and sisters in Christ, you, 
our amazing online family. God bless all of you. We love you. Thank you for your giving tonight. God bless you guys. Thank God for these people getting saved. Praise the Lord. So I'm not going to go three hours tonight. If you guys can please forgive me for that. It's 3.11 a.m. Jerusalem time. Pastor Begley is going to go to bed. Good night, everyone. We love you. I'll have more YouTube videos and more information for you. Tomorrow, big day of recording for me. So I'm going to be in Mount of Olives, the Valley of the Rephaim, or the Valley of the Giants, the Evil Council, and the U.S. Embassy, and the Mount of Corruption. I'll be filming from all of these locations tomorrow. Good night, everybody. God bless you. We love all of you. I miss all of you guys, and I'll see you soon. I'll be back home in Indiana soon. And thank God I'll get to stay home for about a month. And that'll be really before we go to Canada. God bless all of you. See you guys tomorrow. Are you serious? Are you serious? What? What? What?